man. First one of the Jesus. Oh, basically. One around my big like a man, very bad. So what was his full name? Ruben Adepishola Okay. Very brilliant chap. Born in Lagos. Was he born in Lagos? Are you saying my grandfather lived in Lagos? Yeah. My grandfather lived in Lagos and your father was born in Lagos. He went up to Aniwe. Aniwe was born in Lagos. Uh, is that the one that uh, killed the Aguru or something like that? Killed him? Aguru? No. He said that one. He's a driver. Yeah. Yeah. is the one that killed the Aguru. Yeah. Okay. Dirty Tyson. I saw him again. I saw I saw So they say he attended uh, Army School, Zaria, right? Yeah. In the early 60s. History had it that he enlisted with J.T. Useni. J.T. Useni, yeah. Azaria. Azaria, same day. Enlisted to the Nigerian Army, same day. Oh, wow. He said the man plays football. Yeah, he was a, a good boxer. Sport. A good sportsman. He was a good sportsman. So he swims too. Yeah. You don't know about that. I don't know about that. But I yeah, but I know he was into fen fencing. I have evidence of some of his picture into boxing. So what again do you know about him? About his death. Uh, he's a professional, highly professional military man. Yeah, they say he's cool in Sandhawks, London. School in Sandhawks, yeah. Uh, Sandhawks, uh, yeah. Traveled abroad, traveled to several countries abroad. It was when he returned from India in 1962 that uh, I think the day he returned from India was the day they gave birth to Adebayo. Oh, 62. Adebayo. That's the architect now. Adebayo Jiswa. Okay. Adebayo was born in 1962. That was the day he returned from India. So that was the day he gave birth to Adebayo and he named him Motobayo. Motobayo. Motobayo, not Adebayo. Eh, what does that mean? Motobayo, that is I need to see joyful teeth. I need to see so, something of joy. Okay, Bayo is the last born now. He's the last born, yes. The last born of his siblings. Motobayo. Motobayo. There were five boys, uh, six boys. Six boys, including himself. Well, learned when he died, the mother didn't survive it. The mother died uh, like uh, seven years after his own death. Okay, seven years. Seven years. Yeah. The mother died in 1974, around June 1974. June 1974. Yeah. Wow. What was the mother's name? Is it Jagede or something? I used to know that. Is it Ayejino? Ayejino. Who? The mother. The mother. The How do you know Sylvester? You say the mother's name. Yes. You say what is the son name? Like the mother's son name. Is it Jagede or Aijino? Aijino, not Jagede. So that means it's related to Hako now. Uh -huh. yeah. uh, That's what Hako okay. is your uncle. Okay, okay. Man, the record has it that he died in 1967, October 1st, in action, according to Nigerian story. Well, can they put a light to that for us? What happened actually transpired? Yeah, do you yeah. have information what happened in the war? What my father told me was that we, they were in Benin. Because my together. father was with him anyway. They were in Benin together. My father was in Benin then. Okay, that's Oga Moses now. Moses. What rank was your father that time? No, he was not in the army. He has not joined Okay, that. okay. He okay, they were both together. Anyway, was there. He well. was learning radio. He was a radio mechanic at Tigara. He had problem with his Oga, okay. with his master. So your grandfather took him to Benin to meet your dad. Adevi. Adevi that he should put him in school. I okay. don't want him to Because this boy is equally brilliant. I okay. wanted to train him in school. Okay. So Adevi said, no, I think I should either... And he now asked him what he was doing. And he told him I was into I was learning radio mechanics. He now took him to Bender Broadcasting Corporation to go and learn radio Okay, Bender Broadcasting. Yeah, okay. he said I know like, Sapel or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But he left one big uh, yeah. He said I know Sapel Road mm. to Bender. He said, okay, you can be learning it here. Yeah. So he said it, not, it was not quite the two weeks that he started learning that Nigerian Civil War broke out. Okay, that was 67. 67. Yes. Yeah. And he met Annie with him. 
Okay, he met Godwin he met anyway yeah. with, uh, Adebi. with Adebi. Yeah. What about Douglas? Douglas no, was Douglas, there. Douglas, uh, he didn't talk about Douglas anyway. Douglas you was know, there. Douglas may be there, but you know, he and Douglas. No, Douglas, Douglas, Do Douglas was in Edo College. Okay, okay. Yes, because history has it, he was attending Edo College. Because, uh, along the line, he said the Adebi sent himself and Aniwe home together. They, were, they both left their beginning home. Okay, it was also when the war broke out. In okay, when the war broke out. When the war yeah, broke yeah, out, say, yeah, two of you should be going home. That I am a soldier. Anything that anything can happen to me, and I can stand it. But two of you should start going home. That was how he said to them. Okay, for security. For security purposes. Yeah. yeah. That if anything happened to me, you get to yeah. me about it. I think he had that in uh, the initial that something may likely happen to me. You know. He said, if anything happened to me, you guys will hear about it. But you guys should be going home. So he sent the two of them home. On reaching home, they discovered that uh, the Nigerian army troop just dislodged the Afghan troop. Too. There was heavy war at us also between Nigerian army and Biafra. Because of so, uh, a lot as soon as they were entering home, yeah, because Alonso also invited the Biafra yeah, army to come and eliminate some of the prominent men. In Ososo. That should be 67. Then. 67, yeah. Okay. So to come and eliminate the prominent, some prominent men in Ososo, mm. and then the news maybe spread. LG Alabi and Co. So they now got to know about all those things and then they now invited. They now invited Nigerian uh, army. One Captain Omeza, which that also was okay, oppressed too. I've heard of uh, Captain Omeza. Captain Omeza now invited Nigerian uh, army to come and dislodge the Biafrans. So when they dislodge the Biafrans, they were now, you know, normally when they capture a town, they will take charge. So what they took, they took charge of the town. I died and anyway we were coming from Benin. So they arrested them. Took them to Ipegu where the, their commander was. And the commander happens to be General Mutala Ramat Muhammad. Okay, Mutala Muhammad. Yeah, he said so. He confirmed so it. So when they got to Ipegu, So Mutala was in also. Yeah, he was in That means Mutala and Adebi will be friends. They were friends. He knew okay. Adebi. So when they got there, they were now interviewing them. You guys say you are from Ososo. Which family are you from? Because there are elders from Ososo there mm. that will identify you. And actually agree that yes, you are from Ososo. So when they got to Ibegu, they met Mutala Mohammed, a very young officer city. Say, yes, young man, where are you from? Are you Biafra or not? They say, no, we are Nigeria, we are from this community. Where are you from in this community? They say that they are from Ojisha or something. Ah, do you know Ruben Ojisha? Ah, he's our elder brother. This is the next person. This is the one. This is the younger brother to him. Ah, the one following him. Wow, well, you guys should sit down. Serve them tea. Is my story wrong? No, your story is wrong. They served them tea, they drank, and then he discharged them. I was at the left. The next thing they heard was his death, that he, he was the one that bombarded Onicha. Okay. Yeah, he was the one that led the troop that bombarded Onicha district. It caused a lot of uh, havoc. But being that that is not Nigerian army territory, the Biafra had yeah, an upper hand. hand yeah. Yeah. So that was why they, it's like they, they kind of landed with them up there. And then he was apprehended as the commander of the troop. So they wasted them, that was like but only. Including the commander. Of course. I was 28 years old. Then. 28 years old. Ah, well. then, yeah. Nobody lives forever, it's part of life. 1939 to 1967. 1939 to 1967. Yeah. The guy tried. 28, 28 years. They say he was very good in acrobatics, gymnasts. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I saw medals in Udre when I was growing up. I saw cops, I saw medals, sports medals. Those sports, yeah. cup, gold, cup, yeah. gold, what of it, the gold, gold. Those sports, the gold, they are all stolen. In, oh, in, in the Nigeria, I mean, those days, if you are a good sportsman, you win a lot of. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They, 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 they school they, abroad that time. Yeah. yeah. All they do he for him. He was a good sportsman. At, my father told me that he was a very good sportsman, very good footballer. I don't worry, when we put the charity foundation together, we'll do all that. Yeah. It's a family thing, it's not a one man big show. No man can no be an Joshua island. Joshua Charity No, he was Lieutenant Ruben Adebi in Joshua Samarita Fund. No, <laughs> we need to run what we have yeah, now. He was not the only one who went to war. There were three of Joshua who went to war now. Yeah. But we're only using him because he was a senior. Is that not so? Yeah. And so if we use one of Joshua, it doesn't matter now. Yeah. We cannot be so stingy or selfish. So it was after then that uh, my dad and the army would join and listen to the army too. Yeah, for revenge, Mitchell. <laughs> <laughs> Probably so. So, my yeah, dad yeah. listed to the Nigerian army here in Kaduna. The, in Kaduna. Why they are anywhere? I don't know where anywhere listed to the army. army. But uh, along the line, they met in Potai Court. Yeah, yeah. Because after my dad went, he said he was enlisted in Kaduna, taken to Atekuta for training. After the training, he came back to Kaduna. 
they now said they will be, they will be taking him to feed ambulance as a medical as a, uh, serving on, uh, for the fact that he was serving under Nigeria Army Medical Corps. So he was taken to feed ambulance. All those officers that were injured in the course of the war, they were people treating them in the field. So uh, he was there when I knew when I came for treatment. That was how the two brothers met again coincidentally. In Portacop. In Portacop. After, after a long time. So when they came, they, they were telling at each other, are you a ghost or are you a human being? <laughs> <laughs> they were telling at each other. <laughs> so later, what happened? That's known that he was in charge of army logistics. That he eliminated a lot of people. He will carry a troop. He will carry a troop in a, in a, in a army truck. Before you know, he just tried to do it. I normally escape, only God knows. And all of them will be wasted. That the one that trained the Nigerian army most was one uh, lady colonel, the medical doctor. He was one sitting uh, the supreme, uh, the, the third marine commando officer, Colonel uh, Brigadier General Adekule Benjamin, last AKA last copier. His personal physician was a lady, an army colonel, way back then. So he was, he was to take her to go and treat uh, officers. And he wasted this lady. When the Adekule Benjamin asked, Where is the driver that drove her? They said the driver is alive. How come the driver is alive? And then this woman is dead. And then that driver is dead or alive, put him in a solitary confinement that there's a place they will lock you, you can't talk. Now that is, I think that is a maximum uh, detention of Nigerian armies. You won't be able to talk. So, why they detain him there? I was able to escape there, only God knows. When he escaped, he shot his hand and then he came slowly. So it was with that, under that guise now that he came to them. Okay, for treatment, okay. okay. Yes. Okay. So when he came, as the time he came, his name was everywhere. He played wanted nationwide. God in Ojisha, he played wanted nationwide. So they had to allow him for some time. They hid him in the house to allow him to grow beard, treated him, changed his name tag, put him, put him in a plane from Botai uh, Court to Lagos. Because Lagos was like London, there was no war in Lagos. That's where the Supreme Commander was. General Gawa was there. So there's no war in Lagos. Once you get to Lagos... That was the federal capital at that time. Yeah, that was the federal capital at that time. You're a clean man once you get to Lagos. So he now told him, ah, you are an Amor Eko. When you get to Lagos, you can find your way from there. The best I can do for you is to put you on a plane with my own level now, so for you to go to Lagos. He said that as soon as he landed at Botala Mohammed International Airport, Lagos, the first picture he saw was God in Ojiswa declared one thing. So, but he was able to yeah, yeah. he was able to maneuver his way and escape from Lagos back to Kaduna. That was how he related to Kaduna in those days. But the rest and how he retired was history. I get it, man. Thank you.